Number 27 says find the derivative of this function. It says the final answer must be a function of x. Remember to use correct notation and write your final answer. So the way we decide what derivative rule to use is that we look at the structure of the equation. So at first glance, if you're not paying attention, and that's why I said don't just dive into the problem, like take a second to actually look at it fully. So if you just looked at this without paying much attention, you might be like, ooh, I need a quotient rule. And But if you actually look at what's going on, well, this is a, looks like a product rule, but then look at the exponent, okay? So what you have going on here is you have an x in the base, and you have an x in the exponent at the same time for the same term. So that means log diff is required. So the x minus 5 raised to the x minus 2 means logarithmic differ differentiation is needed. Okay, so just to reiterate, every time whether it's indeterminate powers, whether it's um, taking derivatives of, of functions like this, whenever we have variables in the base and variables in the exponent or something strange happening in the base while at the same time something strange happening in its exponent, the only tool we have in math to fix that is logs because logs have that algebra property which lets you separate the exponent from its base. So in an earlier question, they actually specifically said to use log diff, and I, I mentioned in that problem, we don't have to say that because the structure of the equation would mean that that's what you have to do. Well, here's an example of where they don't say log diff, and you're supposed to recognize that this is leading to this. So we're going to take this derivative using logarithmic differentiation. Now, personally, I think it's easier if you rewrite the function, and no matter what this is named, call it y, because it's just a little bit cleaner for the work. So, when we use log diff, the first thing we're going to do is take the natural log of both sides. So trying to work on this side of the equation with like an f of x, an h of x, whatever, it can get a little messy. So if you just call it y, it looks visually different. It's a little bit cleaner and neater to work with. So it's perfectly fine to come up with better symbols if that's what you need to do. So we're going to take the natural log of both sides. Now, when we take the natural log of this side, the next step we're going to do is fully expand the log, uh, the log expression using the property of logs. So you don't have to show all of those steps because many, many people who've practiced these problems can just do the expansion in one step. So I'm going to show you what that expansion looks like, but I'm going to reference on the same channel that you're watching this video, there are pre-calculus math 1113 um, videos that the pre-calculus classes use to review for their exams. One of them, I think it's the exam three, is on logs and exponentials. It might be exam two. I think it's exam two. But on the same channel that the playlist you're watching this on, there is a playlist for Math 1113 Logs and Exponentials. And it's an entire um, little review, very similar to what I'm doing now, where I go through all the algebra stuff, the pre-calculus knowledge you need on ease and logs. So if you are a student who is consistently messing that up on your exams and, and problems, um, that's a good resource that you can go back to review. And I do things like expansion. I do consolidation. So all of the details that you might personally need between these two lines, that's pre-calculus knowledge, those videos will help with that. So this, when we expand it, we get the natural log of x plus x minus 2 times the natural log of x minus 5 minus 5 times the natural log of sine of x. So if you can't go from here to here, like seeing that the natural log of this gives you this, that resource that I just mentioned will be helpful. And it's on the exact same YouTube channel you're watching right now. All right, so now that we're here, let's now take uh, the derivative. Once again, we've created an implicit function. So on the left side, we have to do implicit differentiation. So that's 1 over y dy dx. The derivative of natural log of x is 1 over x 
this requires a product rule. So the derivative of x minus 2 is 1 times natural log of x minus 5 plus x minus 2 times the derivative of this is 1 over x minus 5 minus 5 times the derivative of this is going to be a chain rule, so it's 1 over sine of x times the derivative of sine of x, which is cosine x. These parentheses here are not required. Um, I like to do them in problems like this because I want to like isolate the product rule for myself and then on the next line when I do the cleanup step, I, uh, I get rid of it. But I just like to be able to see that I was taking the product rule of this. All right, so then we solve this for dy dx. Now we do that by multiplying both sides by y. Um, you don't have to write both lines of writing the y and then filling that in. We know we're moving the y over, but that is what y is. So I'm going to do that in one go here. So y, I'm just recopying the original equation. Times 1 over x plus the natural log of x minus 5 plus x minus 2 over x minus 5 minus 5 and cosine over sine x is cotangent x. You can leave it as cosine over sine but some things for math folks are just too tempting. <laughs> and then this is our final answer. So what I'm going to write down here So on the same YouTube channel, that's the name of the playlist, and you can spot check, go through, you can see there's a document that goes with it, and anything you need to know about logs or E that comes before calculus, it's all going to be addressed in this, uh, in this playlist if you need some practice.